Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. It is a really gloomy day and really quite cold here in the south of England. Thus, I've got my UD on and I've got the lights on. We've kind of had this really dull like week or two where it feels like right, the sunrise was over um, to, like an hour and a half ago or something. Um, and uh, yeah, and I still have had to put the lights on in order for you to see me. And it's been like that all day, every day for well over a week nearly two weeks so and uh yeah it's rather annoying <laughs> uh, but i'm hoping that will it will get brighter a bit today um today is remembering sunday uh so yeah i'm going to be watching the service on telly usually on a sunday i go to my mum and dad's but i'm not today because sadly my mum's come down with a stinker of a cold so i'm getting this done now so i can kick this off with my terrible ball brand to get uploaded and um yeah and i can watch the remembrance day service on the telly but yeah it's been a busy 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 week for me um with work and such i had a couple of days in my office as well uh, i got caught up in loads of traffic for two days oh so much fun um but i survived it and so i am here and i have um been enjoying reading my book this week which i really didn't want to come to an end but i had to um and of course i'm here to review it and that is to Be a Lady, biography of Catherine Cookson by Cliff Goodwin. Now, last week when I was talking about this, I couldn't remember what year Catherine Cookson died. And I looked to the blurb and right at the bottom down here, it refers to in 1991 when she told she was told she only had months to live, she was ordered her diaries and personal papers be destroyed. So I took that to mean, oh, 91 was the year that she died. And I said that in, in, um, in the video. And uh, no, it was 93. Yeah, she was told she was going to die within months, um, but that was not the case. So just to clarify, after I made that error last week, that she died in 1993. This book ends on the 1st of January 1993. It came out in 1994. So I don't know this to be true, but I have a feeling that Cliff uh, Goodwin was probably writing about her either in private or whatever um before her death and uh, then came out with the biography but that's just me speculating i don't know if that is to be true um but as you may know if you've been watching my channel uh for a while i fell head over heels in love with catherine cookson because of the dramas i stumbled across them uh thanks to the drama channel here in the uk they just happened to be showing I think it was colorblind and when they, it was just starting when I was at, at mum and dad's um, for our weekly Sunday lunch and uh, it, it, we finished lunch and it was just starting and we thought oh what the heck why didn't we just watch it because there's nothing else on and I, I liked it it's a bit of a, a funny drama but that's a whole other story um, <laughs> but yeah and I just thought oh, I wonder if drama has any others and I fell down the rabbit hole I ended up buying the DVD set because not all of the Catherine Cookson dramas were available uh, on like catch up of the drama channel at the time. Uh, I'm not sure if they are right now, but you can always check out and have a look. Uh, and so, yeah, and then I started collecting her books and my sister, she's there's loads of charity shops um, in Worcester where, where she lives and loads of Catherine Cookson books. Charity shops, even though there are loads of them where I live, not one of them have I found a Catherine Cookson book. <laughs> so it's like everyone in Worcester, it would appear, <laughs> has donated Catherine Cookson books. And she had a load in her house as well. So she gave me this massive bag of Catherine Cookson books and like for Christmas and and birthdays for the past um, like year and a half or something, nearly two years, uh, I get like four or five new uh, additional ones so i'm like oh my gosh so i've got loads of catherine Cookson books that i've been making my way through and reviewing on this channel so when uh my sister gave me this book i was like oh my god yes so catherine was a highly highly private woman and as mentioned on the blurb in 1991 even though she wouldn't die for another two years when she was told she only had a few months to live she said destroy everything in her lifetime she categorically refused to have 
any biographies written about her. And it's even noted in this that when uh, fans tried to set up a dedicated fan appreciation society for her, she wrote to them and said, disband now. I do not want, even though I appreciate you being fans of my work, I don't want this. Please do not do this. I don't want you trifling over my private life and such. I just want to write books and be left alone and have nothing more said about me. And they respected her for 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 contacting them and the, the association uh, didn't happen. As to if it happened post her death, I have no idea. Um, but I do, you know, respect that they said, look, if Catherine has contacted us and said, please don't do this, we're going to respect her wishes. So yes, I, I really, really liked that. Catherine Cookson had a hell of a life and Cliff told that story beautifully. I have to say, I, I went through the ringer with this book. I found myself completely immersed in um, the visceral writing of, of the way he portrayed her her life, her surroundings, so growing up, etc. And throughout the course of the book, um, I laughed, I cried my eyes out. I read the I read the ending this morning, and I'd send voice message to my sister and our bestie Sarah. Hey Sarah, uh, and uh, just I I was I was just floored by the ending. But what I really do love, and this, I, I do speculate with the whole, he was writing this before she died. What I really, really love is that it ends on January the 1st, 1993. He didn't cover her death. And you could argue because of, with his writing and possibly, you know, getting it published and everything, that at the time that she died, um, he would possibly already finished the book. I have absolutely no idea. Again, this is me speculating. But also, death is a very private thing. And it allowed her to be able to have her peace and have that private moment. She was a very, very private person. And yeah, I feel like she deserved that private moment. The fact that when she was, I think, 85 at, at this point, she, at the point I'm thinking, uh, that was the last public appearance that she made. And she basically begged everyone, please, we have, my husband and I have done so much. We have gone so many places but we need to have our time by ourselves. Please keep keep us out of things. Let us have some private time together, just as husband and wife. We've never had that um, with my career and such. And we deserve to have that and have a rest. And people went, okay, and stepped back and allowed them to have their time. That those last years were, their time just to be with each other as much as possible and i feel like cliff did the really respectable thing of going that's their time it's private i'm not going to go there and january the first uh, 1993 was the day that she became lady catherine cookson as it says as it's called to be a lady uh cliff's final paragraph well, a couple of paragraphs I want to read. Um, and it's talking about, it begins with her um, talking about an interview that she gave uh, not long before uh, she withdrew from public life. And, um, oops, sorry, covers decided to slip off my book. How frustrating. There we go. And it says, does she ever worry about dying? I used to worry about it all the time. In fact, I could write a book about it, but I have come to the conclusion that death is one of two things. It's either the start of a great adventure, if there is something after death, or if there isn't, it's one long 
peaceful sleep. On January the 1st, 1993, Catherine's childhood dream came true. In recognition of her services to literature and her tireless support of charities, she was made a dame of the British Empire. Tom hugged his wife and they both cried. Catherine Cookson was at last a lady. To end the book on such a bright, beautiful moment of her life, I think is beautiful. It truly is. Now, Catherine Cookson, in case you are not aware, had a really tough beginnings. She was raised to believe that her mother was her sister and that her grandparents were her parents. She only found this out, found out the truth, sorry, um, when she got teased and bullied by other children who basically told her the truth. Everyone on the street knew the truth, but she had no idea. And it was only then that she found out what really the truth was when she was about 10 years old. That really affected her. Her mother uh, basically had an illegitimate child who was Catherine. And yeah, to save face and such, and also because she was uh, a maid, she had to she had to work. And she, if the, her bosses found out she had an illegitimate child, she wouldn't be able to work. So they told this story, and yeah, she went back home in order to uh, have the baby and everything. And uh, yeah, she told the lie that she didn't have any children and went back to work and became an alcoholic. There was a lot of alcoholism, different forms of abuse and such that surrounded the, the family. Uh, and from Catherine's father's side, also addiction to gambling and such. As time went on, Catherine then developed health issues from, from childhood where she would have terrible nosebleeds. She had issues with her leg. Um, at one point, she developed lead poisoning from a job that she was made, she was taken out of school of and made to get a job doing painting and it developed her getting lead poisoning. She would not find out until much later in life that she had a blood a deficiency um, from that she got genetically from her father's side, which meant she, although she could get pregnant, she couldn't carry children's term. And she gave birth to stillborn son uh, who was born uh, six months into the pregnancy. And yes, yeah, she had multiple miscarriages. It led to a complete mental breakdown where she had to be admitted to a psychiatric uh, facility and given electroshock therapy in order to help her deal with the breakdown and she suffered terribly from depression from, with depression from that point on her chronic health issues meant that she was constantly in pain uh, some days she could get out of bed some days she couldn't her husband was her rock her everything um, they were together from about age 20 all the way through to their deaths when they were in their 90s and Tom only lived about three weeks after Catherine died. It felt it, the, the one couldn't live without the other and he managed to settle things uh, with various accounts and, and such of Catherine's plan her funeral, have a funeral, went to sleep and never woke up. It was almost like he's like, OK, I've settled everything. It's time for me to go. And that just it gets me emotional. It really does. It's the way that Cliff writes about their marriage is so beautiful. I just I fell in love with Tom. It, it's really Catherine's story is one of these is one of these situations where in order to understand the woman, you have to understand the village that, that raised her. And he spends time talking about each person in Catherine's life. He was a very strong, um, significant person in her life. 
very well. I mean, I found like Kate, Catherine's mother. I went into this thinking, oh God, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like her. I mean, I knew things about Catherine's life. I thought I knew things. And then this book completely rewrote that in my mind. I thought, okay, Kate's just going to be a really annoying, narcissistic, alcoholic, brutal woman. And then reading what she went through, and I'm getting emotional again, reading what she went through, I, I get it. I completely understand. But there are things where I go, right, I can't quite forgive you for that. Like telling Catherine when Catherine was five months pregnant with her pregnancy that she gave birth to a stillborn baby at six months into, into the pregnancy. When she was five months in, she contacted Catherine, who was in like London, to say, um, I'm really, really ill. You have to come now. I'm, I'm, I'm in a very, very bad way. Catherine and Tom travelled from London all the way up north to see a mum, thinking that her mum was dying, and it turned out she had a cold. So there are things that I can't forgive Kate for. But there are things that she went through that she should not have had to endure. And say for Catherine, she should not have had to endure a lot of things that she did. And now that I've read this book, and she, Cliff talks a lot about parallels to her, to the books that she went on to write, and quote, it gives quotes from books as well. I'm like, there, there's more things now in these books from the dramas and also the books that I've read that I think back on that I go, oh my God, that, that character is that person. That moment is because of that. I totally understand now why factors are used such as, and I'm going to say it because Catherine does use it in her books, rape is used um, as, as, as the, the ways in which she does and, and as often as she does because of the things that she and her mother encountered. Now, I only recent like the last book of Catherine's that I read was the one I reviewed like the other week, which was The Gambling Man. And that is that's basically the dad that she never knew. The one who gave her the horrific blood disorder that she had, which took away the chance to have a child that she so desperately wanted and when they found out that she had this they tried to adopt they tried to foster and even though yet they got onto lists and such they're like okay you're you're couple 200 in the queue or something they never got to the front of that queue they never got the chance and obviously it was back in the 1950s so like the surrogacy and stuff like that wasn't wasn't an option and it just, it breaks my heart. And it's so interesting how thinking about her stories, how family is so important and breaking cycles and such. And that's what that's making me even more angry about the Malin trilogy. This whole trilogy of books, which is all about the generational cycles of things that happen and the courage to break them and find your own path and do what you need to do and the bloody drama went and changed the ending so of the second book so which is the end of the last drama and the Malin um the Malin dramas so the this the the, the cycle is never broken I and mean, it's just it frustrates me so much that they did that it really, really does. It breaks my heart. Catherine was, was an extraordinary woman and Cliff paints her so beautifully. I want to give her a massive hug. I want to thank her for writing those stories. I want to... I, I want to say... I'm so sorry you had to endure what you endured, but my God, she dealt with it with such grace and dignity and wit and charm. She said 
when uh, kind of things got revealed um, about her mother because she wrote a book called Our Kate which is about her mum um, she began opening up about things um, and um, the whole thing about her being a legitimate and a bastard which is a word that is just so oh, annoying um, she hated that she absolutely hated that and when the press started using it to describe her because of when our Kate came out and all this stuff was coming out about her about her mother she went yeah might be a bastard but I'm the best selling hard hardest working bastard in the business so come at me you know she she went she endured so much and left a legacy of the most astonishing books and I just, I'm in awe of this woman. I'm so sorry for crying. I didn't anticipate I would. Um, but yeah, what a woman. What a woman. I just, I cannot get over her. And the amount of money that she gave to charity. And every year, like near the end of the book, she said um, every year, for the pensioners on the street and around the streets where she lived, she and Tom would write a handwritten card, Christmas card, to the individual and put a £50 note in the card. So then that way they got something to help them uh, through, through the course of the year. There's ordinary people that uh, she wanted to help. Just, my gosh, she gave so much money to, to baby units, to cancer research, um to uh blood disorder um research to even things like uh, to help with skin conditions like psoriasis and eczema and stuff like that she that that she went through day on day of pain and her writing saved her life and she was amazing i'm so sorry i didn't mean to cry <laughs> but yeah Catherine was very unique, hardworking, strong, extraordinary woman. And I'm so glad that I read this book. <laughs> oh, gosh, sorry. Oh, gosh, okay. I better wind this up because I haven't talked much about Cliff. Um, but as you can imagine, I fell in love with this book. I... I absolutely adored it now i don't know if there are any other biographies of catherine cookson out there i'm sure there are um but yeah i i would definitely be interested to read what other um others uh, wrote about her especially like as i said this was published in 1994 and she died in 93 so i don't know if say another book has been written about her more than a decade after she died or something i think that would be quite interesting to read um but yeah i i am i i i adored every moment of reading this book i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it um it it painted a beautiful portrait of a beautiful woman <laughs> and even though she hated the thought of biography about her life because i think she feared i think she feared the knowledge about her uh, her origins not for her but for her family she didn't even though she had this great struggle with her mother i don't think she'd want her mother to be deemed a terrible person and Cliff showed that her mother wasn't a terrible person. She was a woman who dealt with the things that she had been handed to her in one way, and Catherine handed them, handled them in another way. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't put someone down for the way that they respond to trauma. <laughs> that's all i've got to say about that um okay i'm gonna turn this off and try and stop crying um but yes so 
Cliff, I think, did a wonderful job in writing this book. And to be honest, I know Catherine probably wouldn't have liked it because she didn't like people writing about her. But I feel like that she, it might have made her smile <laughs> at the very least. I love that she's smiling on the cover. <laughs> so yeah, beautifully constructed, a great balance of focusing on individual people who are very, very important to Catherine's life. Um, a great read. It made me laugh. It made me cry my eyes out. It's extraordinary, just as she is extraordinary. So thank you, Cliff, for writing this. So my usual questions, would I read this again? Yes, definitely I would. I I, I, I don't think this is going to be leaving my bookcase anytime soon. Um, would I recommend this to anyone? Yes, definitely. If someone wants to read about Catherine Cookson and understand the woman and understand the context of her various books, please get a hold of this and read it. Um, and then you'll understand more. Um, would I read any more of Cliff Goodwin's books? Yes, I looked it up the other day. He uh, has written four books uh, about various different celebrities. And yeah, I, I think I'd have to, uh, I'd give one of the others a go. So it's my thoughts on biography of Catherine Cookson, To Be a Lady, uh, by Cliff Goodwin. And of course, I highly recommend the dramas as well, should you be interested uh, in uh, watching one or more of those uh, in order to get into Catherine's works. So if you read this book, let me know what you think, leave a comment in the comments below, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, tag to your side, and I'll be back next week where I promise I won't cry uh, with uh, my next read. It's very short, so I'm definitely going to be back with you next weekend of Oh, I Do Like to Be by Marie Phillips, a take on A Comedy of Errors by William Shakespeare. So I will be back with my thoughts on that one as soon as I'm done. All right, everyone. Bye.